Interesting developments with the Biden campaign. They appear to be making a significant investment in the state of Texas. They're putting 13 more staffers on the ground there um, in an indication that, look, the polling in Texas has been close. We kind of keep expecting it to separate Mm -hmm. for Trump, for him to ultimately end up with a victory there, as Republicans have won that state for many, many years at this point. Um, But it has, to this point, remained tight. And it appears that with these new 13 staffers additional on the ground, the Biden team is making a real play for it. Texas, I mean, my home state, look, in a lot of ways, it is the perfect perfect playground for Biden, which is that Texas population has exploded. Most popular U-Haul route in the country is San Francisco to Austin. A lot of the people who are coming to Texas are upper middle class. White suburbanites are moving to the suburbs, Austin, Dallas, um, and Houston. Many of them come from New York and California, mostly culturally liberal who move there for the lower taxes. Biden, of course, says he won't raise taxes on anybody more mm-hmm. than four hundred thousand dollars. This man is made for the new Texans, uh, many of them who have registered to vote there. And and it's actually counter to the whole like demography is destiny take. If Democrats do win the state of Texas, I don't think it'll be because of Latinos. I think it'll be because of white suburbanites. But I don't think we're just there yet. It'd have to be a combination of a couple of things, which is depressed turnout for Trump amongst evangelicals, and I just don't see it. Trump actually has 7% more support amongst the evangelical community than he did whenever he ran in 2016. That's still a very huge voting block in the state of Texas. Texas Hispanics and Latinos are also very different than the rest of the country. We have like fifth generation Latinos who live in the state, many of whom we even identify as white Hispanic and who have voted Republican for a couple of generations. So overall, I think it'll probably be tight around the Beto margin of like two points. But the fact that they are fighting for it is a big deal. It is. It's very interesting. I mean, Democrats have long dreamed of winning Texas because there are so many electoral college votes at stake. If you add Texas to California and New York, you're pretty much done. And I think basically what the Biden campaign would have to pull off is this massive swing in suburban and senior voters that we have seen them Mm -hmm. garnering and that we saw in the 2018 midterms as well. But they'd have to pair that with some really strong both turnout and overall numbers with Latino voters. That's been a weak spot. For Joe. Yes. So if you put the two of those things together, if he was actually able to run up the score with Latinos and outperform where Hillary Clinton was even last time around, then I think he'd be in range to pull off Texas. Without those two pieces, I think it becomes very difficult. Look, there's a couple dynamics. First of all, from a strategy perspective, um, it's an indicator of the fact that the Biden team has had a very lean campaign operation. They didn't have a lot of money in the bank. Now they do. And they're in a position to make some of these big moves and spend a lot of money, too, on the airwaves. The Trump campaign, meanwhile, had this big cash advantage that we covered here that they've completely squandered. And so now, while the Biden campaign is flush and putting millions in swing states, the Trump campaign is facing a cash crunch. And they've had to pull down ads in key swing states. They're getting dramatically outspent in almost Mm -hmm. every key swing state. Let me break. This is a really incredible breakdown that Bloomberg put together. So Biden has spent $97 million on broadcasts since August 10th to September 7th. Trump has spent $21 million. Now, in the crucial battleground states of Wisconsin, for example, $9.2 million of Biden to Trump's $1.5 million. In Florida, $23 million Biden, Trump's $6.4 million. Arizona, $10 million for Biden, $1.4 million. North Carolina, Biden, $11 million, Trump, $3.7 million. Georgia, finally, is the only place where the Trump campaign has outspent the Biden campaign. So which those is, states I just broke down, pretty critical, right. I would say. Well, and, uh, and, which is kind of a bad sign if yeah. they're feeling like they got to spend a lot of money in Georgia. That's like, right. That's well, a it's a that, couple million dollars, but, you, but you're right. They shouldn't have to outspend Biden. You should just win it. Like, you shouldn't have to do anything. Right, exactly. If you're focused on, like, oh, we don't have that many, many much cash, right. we better, like, shore up Georgia. <laughs> that's not a good place no, to be. I, here's some more from that same Bloomberg article. This is stunning. So, you know, traditionally, Labor Day is, like, the launch of the hot and heavy campaign se- season. It's the, the home stretch right into Election Day. It's when Americans really start to tune in to what is going on. So in Arizona, Iowa, Nevada, New Hampshire, and Pennsylvania, all key battleground states, the Trump campaign has not aired 
any local ads since Labor Day. Yeah. I mean, they're completely off the air in some of these places right now. They've also cut back in Minnesota, Michigan, instead shifting that money into Florida, North Carolina, and also Georgia. So you've got, you know, look, I'm skeptical, especially at the presidential level, that money is really the thing. Hillary Clinton outspent Trump last time around and it didn't work out. He's the president. People pay attention to every word he says. He's got all the free advertising that he wants. But this is a very bad sign. When you are all, when you squandered all this money, you haven't defined Biden in a way that, you know, that creates a negative impression around him and makes it a choice where people would, even if they're not loving you, that they would go to your side because they really hate Biden. You haven't done that. You haven't framed a second term vision like you need to be able to spend on the airwaves to actually lay out your case to the American people. And they are not really in a great position to do that right no, now. Certainly. It's a very bad position. And, you know, we're going to see really the results of some of that mismanagement of the early days of the campaign now. All right. So tomorrow on Rising, Matt Iglesias is going to discuss his new book, One Billion Americans. And the Trump campaign is going to respond to this idea of a Joe Rogan-hosted debate. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. Excited to see you back here tomorrow. See you tomorrow.